and then a few more technical details around insulin and this time I'm just going to quote from a book by Gary Taubes who's an author of um, several books. One was called Good Calories, Bad Calories. This particular book um, is why we get fat and what to do about that. And then there was also a, quite a, a technical summary of his um, articles in a book called The Diet Delusion. So as we've learned over the last few decades, not all calories are equal, not all carbohydrates are equal. So it's no longer a case of just calories in versus calories out, which was what we were taught when I trained as a dietitian in the 1980s. So at the time it was very much um, concluded and um, never questioned that if you became overweight or obese that it was simply a case of eating too much. In the last I would say a decade or two and there are many scientists who've been contributing to um, giving us this this new information and and helping us to understand really what was going on it was more um, better understood that if you're looking at how your calorie intake was made up in terms of the macronutrients like carbohydrates, protein and fat, it was in fact um, not only about your total calorie intake but how those calories were made up and very often because your total carbohydrate intake was too high maybe your fat intake was too low and that was making you insulin resistant and that was making you fat. So Gary Taubes in his book um, Why We Get Fat said to be precise the insulin stashes fat in the fat tissue and assure assures that it stays there. Our muscles are forced to burn more carbohydrates to compensate and we deplete our reserves of glycogen, which is alone might make us hun hungrier. The result is that we want to eat more and expend less while our fat tissue just keeps filling up with fat. So that is really the biggest issue with insulin really if it's over secreted and when you become insulin resistant um, secreting more than than what you did before you will always be hungry and the more carbs you're eating the fatter you will get the hungrier you will feel so in order to reverse this we need to cut down on your carbohydrate intake we need to change the fats that you are eating, perhaps eating more fat, making sure that you're getting adequate protein so that you are less hungry. And then um, as you've started to clean up your diet, perhaps look at introducing fasting. I don't rush into fasting um, on my fasting courses. I give people about two weeks to clean up their diet, to remove the excess carbohydrate to start focusing on healthy nutrients, on vegetables, on adequate fat so that they're feeling less hungry and so that they um, start to have more balanced blood sugar. And then we start to include shorter fasts, maybe 20 to 24 hours. And then over the next few weeks, a slightly longer, slightly longer. So if you are somebody with known insulin resistance where it's been diagnosed, ultimately you would want to do at least two 36-hour fasts a week in order to ensure that the insulin levels come down, that you are less inflamed, also that you're depleting um, all the stored glycogen in the liver and in the muscles by not overeating carbohydrates. And then you will start to lose weight. Uh, you will also then find that the insulin sensitivity will start to improve over time. So, for example, somebody with a fasting insulin of 15 
might find that in the next six months it might come down to nine or eight or even lower. I do also suggest um, very particular nutrients and herbal support for somebody who's got a stubborn insulin resistance so that we can really get this down faster but that's usually a very personal uh, protocol uh, depending on everything that's going on for that person.